Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. I'm so happy to be here with you. We are going to be making a really cute project. I hope you've been enjoying all of these zany zoo projects for the last week and a half or so. Um, I've really been having a great time sharing them with you. And I hope that if you've missed any that you check out my blog, InkyHandsWarmHearts.com where you can find um, anything that you missed. There are blog posts every day. All right, let's see. Let me explain what we're gonna work on today. So the Zany Zoo um, bundle is so cute. I love it so much and it's really been a joy to work with. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. Um, the designer series paper that goes with it is incredible. It is super fun and it's just, I just have enjoyed um, seeing all the critters, all the different parts and pieces of that beautiful pack of paper. And I think that they go so well with the little, you know, with all of the little um, projects that we've made. I hope that you've been enjoying those. So the paper has a bunch of critters as I've been explaining to you um, over this time that I've been working with them. And I saw this image of a little tiger, of a lion, not a tiger. I almost called it a tiger, but a lion. And he was sitting here by the fire with a marshmallow. And it just gave me like this great idea that I needed to do something with s'mores. So I started looking and trying to figure out what I wanted to use, what I wanted to do with the s'mores and ended up deciding to make this really cool little box. So what's inside here are three chopsticks. You have milk chocolate, marshmallow, and graham cracker. And they come in a three pack. They are called the S'mores Collection, and they are a lot of fun. And don't worry, I have linked them in the description of this video. So if you would like to get them, you will have the link to order them. I ordered them, and I thought that they are just amazing for this cute project. So I hope that you guys will enjoy. It's always a fun treat. It's perfect for a Girl Scout, um, a troop leader, um... It's just a cute little gift to give um, a s'mores lover, you know, anybody who likes to camp, um, your camping buddy, just lots of people. And it's a very simple, easy project to make. There's just some scoring involved and some trimming. So I'm going to show you how to go about making this cool project. It also uses the nested essential dies. We're gonna cut that window. And the nested essential dies, if you haven't seen them, this is what they look like. And we're gonna be using this collection, the curved rectangles, okay? So you're gonna start with a piece of four and a quarter by 11. And this is Bommy Blue. It's the color I chose to use um, for this project. And we are going to score it on both the short and the long side. I'm pulling out my Simply Scoreboard. We'll start down the long side first since that's the most um, that we're going to be doing the score mark. So we're gonna go three quarters of an inch, two and three quarters of an inch, three and a half, five and a half, six and a quarter, eight and a quarter, and 10 and a quarter. Again, three quarters, two and three quarters, three and a half, five and a half, six and a quarter, eight and a quarter, 10 and a quarter. Now we're gonna switch to the short side. And the short side, we're gonna do it three quarters and at three and a half. All right, so now you have this paper with this big, long, put my 
board back. Hang on a second. There we go. With all these score marks, and we're going to go ahead and, you know me, I like to burnish along them all. So we're going to start on the sides here. Okay. And then I'm going to start you down here at the bottom. So we're going to have that one. We're going to have this one. I'm bringing them in on each other. This one's going to come this way. This one's going to come this way. And this is going to form our box, this bottom section that I'm doing now. These are going to come forward. So we're just going to bring them forward like that. So. And then these are going to go this direction. All right. So let's talk about these spaces. I'm gonna put it this way so that you guys can see it much better. So you can see here, you have a narrow and then two wide, a narrow, a wide, a narrow, a wide, a narrow. So where you have the inter, the every other, the narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, wide, narrow. This one with the two wides, that's the top section that's going to be this portion up here where your little lion is going to live, okay? I don't know why it's not. Oh, I see. I was caught there. I was, didn't have it closed properly. Okay, so this is the top, the one with the two wide sections. And then the bottom is the one with the narrow wide, narrow wide, okay? So what we're gonna do is first cut away the parts that we don't need. And there's actually quite a bit of them, okay? So I'm gonna mark them with a pencil. I'm gonna flip it over. This is the one with the two big pieces. So we don't need this square. And we don't need this square. And we don't need this one. And we don't need the ones on the opposite sides either, okay? And we don't need this narrow one or that one, and we don't need these, but I'm not gonna mark them because we're gonna use these to make the tabs for the box. These little tabs here, I didn't want to waste cardstock. I wanted you to be able to get two out of every sheet of cardstock, and if I had added this quarter of an inch onto each side, it would have been too wide for you to get two. So we're gonna use these pieces to make our tabs. You'll see when, we, when it's time. So I'm not gonna put marks on them, but they're gonna be cut away. The only thing that we're gonna leave is this bottom section, square, long rectangle square, okay? Everything else gets cut. So I'm gonna show you from this end, we're gonna go ahead and work our way down. And I like to cut inside the score line so I don't have any extra pieces and I'm going to stop here and I'm going to do our little rectangle pieces that we're going to use for the tabs separately so that I make sure that I'm nice and straight when I get to those. Let's get rid of everything that I put an X on first, okay? So we're going to come down. This is the top part of the box. So this is gonna fold in half, okay? And that's where our little our little lion's gonna sit here. And then this piece is going to come in and it's going to be the, um, you'll see in a second, let me just finish. So then these pieces here are going to be the sections that we are gonna cut, um, because this is going to wrap around like this and come down and it's going to be our box. This is going to be here and then this is going to be like so. This is how our box is going to form. Do you guys get that so far? Okay. So we don't need these bottom flaps, which is the next set. So we're going to go ahead and cut our next ones, even though they didn't have the X on them. I just wanted to make sure that they were going to be nice and straight. So I wanted to cut these individually. So we're going to save this one. We're going to do the other side as well. We're going to save 
this one. And this is going to become our two um, side flaps, okay? Now, what we have left is the large rectangle, two long skinny rectangles, and then the four corners. Well, the four corners are gonna be our tabs, so we're gonna angle those. So we're gonna come in here and angle. And we're gonna angle the other side. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is the these are gonna become the pieces that go in. This is gonna turn over. And then these are going to be the flaps that get tucked on the bottom. So these two wings here are gonna need these to come into play. So let me let you get a screenshot so far of what we have. And I am gonna trim, while you do that, I'm gonna trim these and get them ready because we are gonna use these to be our tabs. So I just have to trim the little um, score marks off of them. All right, you should have your screenshots by now. I'm gonna bring back my simply scored because we're going to need that to do another score line. All right, so we have these two tabs now that we cut from the side. All right, and we just need to score them down the center. So this is three quarters of an inch, so I'm just going to move one, two tick marks. From this side, I'm going to go one, two, and then there's the one in the middle. That's gonna be our score. So one, two, the one, the next one, the third one there. So those three eighths of an inch is what it is that you're gonna score at, both of them at three eighths of an inch. All right. Now these are gonna become our tabs. Okay, and they're gonna get attached to these parts. So I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm gonna Make sure that they're nice and burnished. Okay, and I'm gonna glue one of them to each of these pieces because they're gonna be our little quarter inch tabs or whatever. So let me grab our glue, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and I'm gonna put it on this side. And we're gonna attach this one on it. I like to flip it over and make sure that it's right on the edge. Whenever I add a tab, because I don't wanna um, cut any bigger paper, I just double check it. And we're gonna let it set for a minute, but we're gonna angle cut these. Okay, let's do the other side. And I just did this for you guys because I knew that you'd want to get two out of a sheet. All right, so again, I'm going to start it on this side and then I will hold it up and move it into place where it needs to be. So I'll hold this up and I'm going to make sure that this piece is in place. When this goes down, it's nice and smooth on that edge. Now we already glued this one, so let's go ahead and angle cut our little tabs. These are the parts that are gonna go inside of our box. All right. So now this is our final piece. This is what you need it to look like. So you're gonna have long rectangle, 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 long rectangle, rectangle, long skinny rectangle, rectangle, and then you have the tabs that you've attached your two sides. I really like 
um, doing that attaching because number one, you use the paper that you already have, right? Your extra pieces like this, um, you use those and you don't waste them. And you also save cardstock because you're able to get multiples from your piece. All right, so let's go ahead and before we put the box together, we're gonna do a little blending, a little ink blending. So I'm gonna grab a scrap paper. All right, and we're gonna use Azure Afternoon for our ink blending. But I'm gonna show you how I know what we're gonna blend, okay? So we're gonna blend the background, the part that's gonna be right here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our box ready. These are gonna be the tabs. Remember, so they're, this is gonna flip over. So these little tabs that we cut here, they go to the inside. I'm sorry, there we go, okay? And then this is gonna flip over like this. These are gonna get tucked in. The tabs that we just glued on are gonna get tucked in. And then this is gonna come, and I could have cut this off and just glued it there, but I wanted it inside. I wanted it for reinforcement so it would be nice and thick and weighted on that side because I knew what was gonna be in here was gonna be weighted. I wanted this to be weighted. So this panel right here is the one that we are going to do some ink blending on. And then we're gonna cut out the center. So I'll grab my um, stamp and cut and emboss machine and we'll put our piece through, but let's do our ink blending first. So I'm gonna brush some off because this is a dark color and I don't want it to be overly dark, but I want it to be darker than the balmy blue. And I basically am just depositing some color. And I don't mind layering, taking my time, because you get that nice, smooth, pretty look. Add just a hair more. And down on this section, I don't need it to go all the way to the bottom because we have a piece of parakeet party that we're gonna glue here, so it's okay. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. But I definitely want there to be enough blue on that piece. All right, so that's good for the, we'll bring the ink pad back in a minute, but let's go ahead and cut out our window. And when I decided what size I wanted, this is the piece that's gonna be cut out here, but it's gonna be cut out on this side. I um, looked for one so that it would give me enough. You could see I have enough all the way around. And so this is the one that I chose. Let me get out my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and we will get started on that part. All right. We'll put it sideways. All right, we have number one, number two, number three on there. And we're gonna make sure that this little piece stays in place to the best of our abilities. So I like to use, I don't know, sometimes I use washi tape, sometimes I use post-it note tape. This time I'm just gonna use a little post-it flag and that should hold it in place. All right, and I'm gonna bring this in. I'm not gonna put it all the way through. I'm just gonna put it right to the end here. I'm actually gonna crank it through and then I'll crank it back. So once it's through, we'll bring it back. All right. Take off our little post-it flag. All right, and take off our rectangle. And we're actually gonna use this for our box later, so 
you can see it only cuts the stitching on this side. There's no stitching in this portion. It's just a plain opening. It's not double stitched. Some dies are, but this one is not. All right, and let's go ahead and start gluing our box together. Gonna straighten ourselves up here. All right. We have our little piece. I'm gonna put my dies back before I lose them. <laughs> back in their sleeve. All right. So here we go. We're gonna glue in that hole a little piece of window sheet. I don't remember the size I cut it and I didn't write it down, so let's measure it. Ah, oh, looks like uh, two and five eighths by one and seven eighths. And that's gonna go on the inside of our box, right in that spot. And I think I just measured it just in a hair um, for all of these pieces and I'm going to grab my silicone mat here move that out of the way and I'm just going to put the glue on the actual cardstock so I'm just going to go around and you just need a fine line it doesn't have to be a lot in fact you don't want too much glue when you're using a window sheet or it'll take forever to dry So we're gonna go ahead and drop that right here. Just make sure it's in all the score lines and that your score lines can lift up. And this one seems to be fine. All right, so while that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and put our little box together, okay? So we're going to turn our flaps in first. These little flaps, okay? and I'm gonna slide my piece upside down. We can leave the tabs out for right now. This is gonna come in and then this piece is gonna be glued to secure the back of our box, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my tabs in just to give a little bit of stability to our box. And then we're gonna put adhesive on this section here, but before I do it, I'm gonna put some here to keep it closed. So this is gonna get adhesive, and that will keep that section closed. And then we're gonna put some on that section right there. So double on the same section on both layers. We're gonna turn all of this in, okay? And then we're gonna bring this to meet the side and I'm gonna turn it on its back. That will help that piece grab that adhesive. You can also turn it this way and then use your bone folder to press that piece against. But this is our little box that we've now made, okay? Now it's time to decorate it. We're gonna use our designer series paper. So I've cut a lion and a pack and the set of trees. I've cut, um, this is from one of the patterns that has them doing like the everyday kind of thing, but I love this little wiggle. And so we have two of that, two of this size, and then this piece here for our grass, we'll snip off the end here. It looks like we're a little shy, but that's okay. We can lift it right up here and then snip it off Make sure that I have it covered. And I'll bring my scissor in and trim. This is a half inch by, I think three. No, two and three quarters. A half inch by two and three quarters. And it's Parakeet Party. We're gonna glue that next, okay? And we're gonna glue that for the scenery or for the grass before we put our lion and our trees on there. All right, 
So there is our parakeet party. Looks good. All right, so now for our lion, let's go ahead and color him. He is gonna get two colors. He's gonna get pecan pie, and then the light medium pack, the 700 marker is what I'm gonna use for him. So I'm gonna do his mane and pecan pie, and this is um, our Stampin' Blends, which are the alcohol-based markers. If you outline, it's a lot easier to color. All right, I'll do his tail. All right, and then let's do the rest of his body in the 700. All right, and then we just have a little bit of trimming to do. We're also going to use pecan pie on the trunks here of the tree. All right, and we're also going to stamp the words happy birthday to you on this piece that we cut away. in Azure Afternoon. All right, I'm gonna trim, grab my scissors, and I'll have to bring in my um, X-Acto knife in a minute. All right, so we're gonna go here. We now have that new tool for our Take Your Pick tool that has an X-Acto. I need to get a new take your pick tool so that I can leave that on there because I think I will use it a lot. I do exacto knife a lot of things way, 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 way long time ago, over probably over 10 years, maybe not quite. Um, Stampin' Up! used to have an exacto knife and I still have it and um, until I get my new take your pick tool where I can leave that exacto knife on there all the time. I tend to grab it because it's right here in the drawer next to me and I'm used to grabbing it for things. That's a new um, product that we were just able to get. So I'm just gonna bring out my glass mat and my old trusty Stampin' Up! exacto knife. See, it's almost wore out. <laughs> That's how much I use it. Um, but I'm just gonna come straight down here and leave a little border around these trees. I wanna have some opening because I want you to be able to see the background. And it's I could not get in here with the scissors easily. It's much easier to get in here with this X-Acto knife than it is with a scissor just to cut those little openings. There's that one. And I'm gonna do these two little tiny pieces up here, little triangles, just to keep it uniform. All right, so now we have colored and we're ready to put it together here. All right, let's glue our designer series paper onto our box and then we'll do our um, line is gonna be used, I'm gonna use some um, dimensionals with him. So we'll start with this back piece. This is gonna be on the back side of the box. That's where we're gonna put our happy birthday sentiment.
Looks cute back there, doesn't it? All right, let's do these sides in front of the box. So I cut it a little bit narrow for the front because I wanted to see a lot of the blue, but on the sides, I didn't mind it covering it up as much. So I cut it a little longer, a little wider for the sides, the designer series paper. I will give you the measurements in a second for um, the designer series paper. All right. I really love this um, designer series paper that they came up with. Um, I like that one side's black and white, and then you have your critters. So you can cut all your little critters out of your um, designer series paper, which is what I did here, and just add a little bit of color to it. You don't have to um, color everything. All right, so there's my last piece. I'm gonna measure these for you. All right, let's see. This looks like it is one and seven eighths. By half of an inch. And one and a half. This one's not quite a half inch. Oh yeah, by half inch. They're both the same. All right, so let's go ahead and attach our um, chapstick to the inside, okay? So it comes in a package like this. It says S'mores Collection. And I have it linked in the description below so you guys don't have to search. And the way that I put them in there, I tried to put so that you could read what they were. Milk chocolate marshmallow and graham cracker. I think it's such a cute, ingenious little gift, right? Especially for those who love to camp and make s'mores, right? All right, so let's add our trees. I hope you guys are enjoying this project. Um, I do a live stream on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock and on Thursday afternoons at one, both are Eastern Standard Time. I'm on the East Coast. All right, so there are my trees and let's add some dimensionals to our lion. We're gonna pop him up. I'm going to cut a piece for that bottom section from our trim. I like using the trim pieces if I can because they just make my life so much easier, right? There we go. And then maybe just a tiny piece on that marshmallow. I don't want that to fall off, that's for sure. And maybe a little tiny piece on a sail. I like to use these smaller pieces, which is why I saved my little ends. Okay, so there are those pieces. Let's get the take your pick tool and pull the rest of these backings off. For some reason, I didn't feel like I had lifted those off. And then let's pick these up that I pulled off already, the two small ones. All right. And we're adding our little lion. So cute. Look at him with his little marshmallow. And then it makes him look like he's in front of the trees with him lifted up. What do you guys think? Isn't this the cutest little project? I love these little, I love that I found them, number one, because I'm usually the worst at finding things when it 
comes to trying to find something in a theme, I never seem to get lucky enough. I don't know what people search for when they do find them, but it's not usually me being the one to be the lucky one. So when I found this, when I was looking for s'mores, I just thought that it was perfect. And um, don't forget about Zany Zoo and the nested essentials dies that we use. I'm gonna try and, I don't think I can, maybe I'll put one laying that way and one this way. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for leaving comments. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And I appreciate it if you would share my video with others. Um, I will see you guys here next Thursday at 1 p.m. And prior to that, my Tuesday nights, the next one. So I hope to see you at that one. If you've never watched my videos before, I hope that you subscribe and share my channel with your friends. Thanks for being here, guys. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!